Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. If I got a good one for you today, we have a new video sponsor here in the shop. That's right, J Tech Photonics right here. We have a 24 watt laser. I met Jay at Workbench this year and he was kind enough to send us one of these lasers. So I can't thank you enough, Jay. It's gonna be awesome. In this video, we're gonna show you how to set it up for your Onefinity controller. On that controller, we're gonna show you how to set it up in Lightburn so you can use it on your Onefinity. We're going to do some cool projects. I've got some night vision shots that you're not going to want to miss. We're also going to do an experiment on some steel. I've got some steel painted with some different colors, and we're going to see if I can engrave that steel and make it come out with something. Win or lose, pass or fail, we're going to get to it. Let's get started. Oh, and you can make things cool like this too. Let's get on it. All right, so we're doing an unboxing here. You've seen a million of those. Safety first, though. Warning laser radiation. And I did open that up that fast because I was that excited. Mounting the laser. It's got a couple magnets and some screws that it slides in. Here I'm going to mount the control box. Pull those screws. Put the box on the top. Put the screws back in. Now, as far as the wiring goes, you want to be absolutely certain you do this right. The laser wire goes in the laser control right there. Then it goes up in that small square black one on the controller itself. The other wire that's coming off of the laser gets connected to the extension and goes in the white plug there. Safety first. All right, so as far as programming it to run on your Onefinity with the black box controller, now if your Onefinity has the latest update, this is a cakewalk. So let me show you. Hit the hamburger bar over here. It'll open up. You're going to go down here to where it says Tool. You're going to click on Tool. Now, as you can see, I have a Pwn CNC VFD in there. That's what runs my spindle. We need to change that to Laser, so hit the drop down. We're looking for JTEC Laser right there. We save and go back to control, and that's all there is to it. The machine will now accept all of the commands for the laser. So if we go down here like this and we scroll down, let's close this out by hitting the hamburger bar. If we go to MDI and we put in a command such as M3S10 and we hit play, it's gonna turn the laser on to its lowest setting. And there's some settings that you're gonna to need to adjust I'll let you look at the manufacturer's instructions for that. But you'll hit play, it'll turn the laser on, then you can locate where you wanna be on your project. When you're done, put in M5 and push play and it will stop the machine, or the laser, I'm sorry, it'll shut the laser off. We go back to auto and then it's just like when you're running a program on the mill with the router or the spindle, you'd open up your file, put the correct file in, push play and rock and roll and you're good to go. Now, what would a project be if I didn't employ my 3D printer? Stay tuned to see where that's going to go. Okay, now you see these clamps. Normally you wouldn't use them, but that board was bowed like a banana. The clamps are holding it down. Here I'm testing the suction on the hose, and it's pulling pretty hard. Lunch.
Are you bored? Come on, Vernon, we're waiting. These people want a tutorial. I'm coming, I'm coming. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Let's get to this light burn tutorial. Okay, everybody, you want to load that JTEC laser on a Onefinity machine into Lightburn. How do you do it? Download Lightburn. You're going to answer the questions that come up. You're going to get to a point where this comes up, and you're going to add a uh, machine manually. So you're going to go down here to Create Manually. Then we're going to pick GRBL. Click on that. Click Next. You're going to click Serial USB. Now we're not going to use it. This thing, the computer is not going to be hooked to the laser while you're running it. You're simply going to load your files into the USB thumb drive just like you do with the regular Onefinity files. So click on Serial USB. Click Next. Now you're going to rename it and I'm going to name this Onefinity so that I can remember. Because Onefinity has infinite possibilities. If anybody knows that joke, you'll get a kick out of it. Come down here. And you're going to put in your axis for your X and your Y. Now my X is 48. I have a journeyman. The Y is 32 inches. I'm going to click Next. You want your origin in front left. And we're going to turn off Auto Home. You do not want your machine to Auto Home when your laser starts up. Click Next. That's it. You're done. Here's a summary. Click Finish. Click OK. Now you'll go over there and you can see that you have your Onefinity JTEC laser talking to each other. And as you can see, we have a larger grid that's rectangular now. If I go back to the other laser, you'll see that's the bed I have for the other laser that we won't talk about. Okay, folks, there you have it. That's how you load the JTEC laser onto Lightburn so you can use it with your Onefinity. Me and the ninja back here got you all set up. Let's go back out to the shop. Now you've already seen how this gets mounted to the top of this black box with these two screws. But you can't run this machine without having these keys installed. So you have to put the key in, turn the key on, flip the switch, nothing happens. Why? Well, you need to push the reset button, which is right in here. And now you can see that that light comes on and we're good to go. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how you set up the actual laser, zero it in, and get ready to cut. So let's spin the camera over there and we'll work on that. All right, so as I said, I'm going to put in that MDI command of M3. We're going to push play and you can see that it turned the laser on. It's right there. So let's pretend that I've already got my X and Y where I want it. And now I'm going to zero for Z. They will send you this piece of acrylic that is your height for Z. And it lines up right underneath this piece of acrylic on the machine itself. So we bring this down until the machine just touches that piece of acrylic. What I like to do is just keep sliding it in and out like that and then I slow it down when I get close and when it just hits there I stop. Then you'd go back to your machine and you would zero out for X, Y, and Z all in one the same way you would when you were using your spindle. Don't lift this back up, don't move it. Pull this out, push play, and it's ready to rock and roll and burn your wood. Okay, some initial observations. Number one, don't let anybody tell you air assist doesn't do anything. I had forgot to turn it on, I turned it on right there. You can definitely see the difference. Secondly, make sure your metal is down on the surface. As you can see, it started to fade up here on the top because it was getting closer to the laser. That's the black. Let's see what blue do. All right, so we're winging it at this point. The carves didn't come out bad or the burns. I guess I'll use some of this. 
and we'll see what it does. We'll start with the black one here. Hopefully I can pour this without splashing it too much. I'm guessing this is what needs to happen. Let that soak a little bit. And let's try rubby rubby. Who says you can't etch metal with a diode laser? That looks like it's etched to me. Let's see what the blue does. Just trying to be careful and not spilling it all over the place. Let's see what blue do. Ah, blue doesn't work. I can just make out the image under there. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Wanted to set it up just in case you couldn't see it in a better light. But that right there is a beautiful etch. This one, you can just make it out if the light hits it just right. But that top one is a win.